we're going to work through it. But um, please use the chat function or the question function on the bottom. I, myself, Anthony Nicolaitis, am uh, talking right now uh, in Unitronics Tech Support in the U.S. And I have Jace Latiri here as well, and he's listening and ready to answer questions, as well as our, our tech support department in Israel, uh, Emil and Ophir and Yair, uh, I believe we're listening as well. So if you have questions, um, we're going we're gonna to try and work through some things and uh, do some demonstrations. But you can also send chat or question to the question spot. Um, if we want to try and hold bigger questions to the end for things we want to go over, maybe that can work uh, too. But if you have a question, uh, feel free to raise your hand or, or send uh, the question to the chat. Uh, today we're going to do basically what we do on our uh, first day of our three-day training, uh, just the beginning of it. We're going to be working with the 570 controller and VisiLogic uh, version 863, which is our current version available on our website. Uh, also, after this webinar, I will uh, hopefully we can post the recording of this video plus the write-up and the application we create here. So there'll be three parts available for download. They'll be able to go over uh, on your own time. Uh, at your own speed, uh, but today we're going to work through uh, together uh, building a, a simple application with some buttons and some lights. Um, and again, we're going to use the 570. So if I can just get a little confirmation that everyone has heard that and that's okay, maybe someone can send me a message on the chat. Okay, looks good. Okay, great. Okay, uh, great. In that case, uh, let's start at the beginning. We're going to open VisiLogic. VisiLogic is the programming environment that we use for all of our uh, Vision Series controllers. That would be the V100 series, uh, 200 series, the 130 the 350 and the 500 series. Um, again, we're going to work with the 570, which is the 5.7 inch color touch screen. Uh, it <coughs> we're going to click on project and new. Uh, we won't save our previous project. What we get when we open a new project is the hardware configuration menu. From here, we can select our different models. Uh, I'm going to select the V570, as it's the controller we're going to work with. To add I.O. to it, we can select our snap-in. If we're using our expansion I.O., we can select that here. But we won't worry about that today. We're just going to go with the 570 and hit OK. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Now we can move on track. So we left off in VisiLogic. Uh, we created a new project, and we went to the hardware configuration, which is the first thing that pops up when we create a new project. And this is how we select the model of the controller we're going to use. So again, we're going to use the 570, and we're not going to select the snap because we're just going to do a little demonstration on how we can use the HMI and the ladder together. We're not going to worry about the I.O. right now. So I'm going to click OK. We're going to come to this logic. And what we see on the first is the, the HMI section. Uh, we can use the navigator here on the left, and we notice that we have ladder and HMI. I can expand under ladder. Is that better? Under the main routine here, we see our ladder section. Uh, we will be using this in a bit, but let's go to the startup display section first. Um, what we're going to do today is create a series of buttons on the HMI and also binary images or what we're going to represent as light that we're going to output. So the first thing we're going to do is select from our horizontal drop down here a uh, button. Uh, we have the option of using shapes, we have text, we have images, and numeric. So all the HMI variables we would use are available here. 
Uh, we're going to create a button. We're going to create it on the upper left hand corner here. And what we're going to do with this button is turn on a light. So we're going to use a, a direct contact, we're going to direct coil, and we'll understand what that means in just a little bit. I'm sorry, are we still having feedback problems or echo problems? Or echo problems? Okay, I see a lot of yes. Are we able to continue like this? Does anyone else have a microphone on? Okay. okay, maybe that will work better now. Okay, so again, I'm sorry, but to continue, we've created a button on the screen here. What we need to do is link it to some bit that we can use in our system. So underneath, we see touch property. We're going to select here, and it brings up our select operand and address menu. We'll be using this quite a bit. This is how we link all of our operands to all of our variables, the select operand and address. Uh, if we notice that we have MD selected, uh, again, we'll discuss what MD is, but for right now, uh, this is the only operand type that we have that we can link to a button. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on the drop down here. And we can see all of the memory bits we have available in the system, 0 through 8191. We're going to use memory bit zero, and what we're going to do in order to keep track of it is give it a description. So we're going to call this button one, okay, and we're going to hit OK. Here. So what we've done again is we've used the button variable, and we drew a button out on the HMI, and we used the touch property, and we've assigned it a bit. So this means whenever we touch the button, this bit will go high, and we'll talk about that in the latter side. So that's our input. Uh, we can think of it as we're simulating an actual button if we had it uh, connected to a digital input. But it's very nice that we have a touch screen. We could easily simulate uh, a, an actual button. So we're going to close this. The next thing we're going to do is to simulate an output is use a binary image. So if we come back to our variables, we notice we have an image section, and underneath that we have a bitmap. This would be a static image. But we're going to use the binary image. So what the binary image is, is a variable that's going to display one image if a, the bit we have linked to it is high, and one image if the bit is low. Um, specifically, we see that we have two available spots to link uh, images do. Uh, so we're going to hit browse here. What we're doing on this left side is linking to the zero state some image. Uh, what we have included in VisiLogic is an image folder. Uh, we should be bought to by default, but it's under uh, the Unitronic install file folder, uh, data, and image C. Um, image C is color images. We also have black and white under image. Uh, but we're going to use LEDs. We're going to use a red and a green just to simulate high and low. So I'll select the red and hit OK. And notice again this is under the zero or the low. And we'll hit browse under the high or the one, and we'll select the green. And we see now on our HMI we have the red and the green. If we'd like, we can select here, and we can display a specific color. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but what we need to do again is link it to some memory. Now I'm going to go ahead and click the ellipse here.
Again, we see the link function. Uh, we can drop down and see all the different operand types we can use. Again, this is a binary image, so we can link it to a binary operand. Uh, what that means is an operand that has either a state of 0 or 1. And again, if it's 0 or low, we'll display this image. If it's 1 or high, we'll display this image. We're going to use, again, a memory bit. Uh, what we can do, again, is click from our drop-down, and we can select the next available, which would be MB1, or if we know MB1.